everyone, Laura from Nanny Parent Connection here. Welcome back to my video series, Working with a Nanny from A to Z. So far in this series, we've covered everything from is a nanny right to your family, to tips for interviewing your nanny. Today in episode nine, we will cover everything you need to know about the nanny contract. So why is it important to have a nanny contract? The main reason is to outline the details of the working agreement so that there is no misunderstanding of the day-to-day -day workings between the nanny and the family. It also offers protections for the family to ensure that nanny care is being provided in the way that they would like. It offers protections to the nanny to make sure they know what to expect for the position. And lastly, it helps to shape the parameters of the position for both the family and the nanny. Many families choose to pay their nannies under the table, and as such, they don't work with a contract. I do always recommend a contract just so everyone has a really clear understanding of all of the parameters of the position. If you're someone who is not paying your nanny legally, make sure to check out the links in the description below and watch the video about what can happen if you don't pay your nanny legally. And of course, before starting on any contract, you will want to familiarize yourself with any of the federal, state, and local laws pertaining to nanny care and becoming a domestic employer. If you happen to live in Washington State, Nanny Parent Connection has a fantastic contract that was developed by a lawyer that's available to you. It's very comprehensive and easy to follow and it's available on our website for $59. Please check out the links in the description below if you would like to take a look at the nanny contract available from Nanny Parent Connection. If you are not in Washington State, you can, of course, familiarize yourself with the federal, state, and local laws pertaining to employing a nanny, and you can put together your own contract. But in this case, just make sure you're following the letter of the law. You could also choose to hire an attorney to put together a nanny contract for you. This will be your most expensive option. You could also attempt to modify an existing contract, but again, just be aware that you need to make sure you're following all of the federal, state, and local laws pertaining to nanny care. A nanny contract does not need to be a complex document, but it does need to be comprehensive. Here are some of the things that I recommend including in your nanny contract. Number one, make sure your nanny contract contains relevant information regarding names of parties involved, location that care will take place, and important information such as emergency contact information in the event that your nanny has an emergency while working in your home. Number two, outline who the care is for. Be sure to include the names of the children and their ages. Number three, if there are any regular transportation needs such as drop-offs and pickups for school, make sure to include the address of the location as well as the times and dates those pickups and drop-offs might be needed. Number four, write out a schedule that care is to happen each week. So if it's the same of every day in the week, write that out. If it flexes at all on different days, make sure to spell that out as well. Or if the time shifts or flexes a little bit from day to day, make sure to note that down and outline that information as well. Number five, make sure you list out any relevant job duties. So if it's strictly nanny care, the nanny will be responsible for only child care duties. Make sure you list all those out. That can include things like laundry for the baby, washing bottles, taking out the diaper trash if that's needed, restocking diaper supplies, in addition to general care, feeding, daily tidying of spaces used throughout the day, that sort of thing. If there are any duties outside of just nanny care, such as help with a family laundry per se, that's going to be more of a nanny household assistant hybrid position. Make sure you list all of those job duties out. Keep in mind that any additional job duties outside of just childcare may warrant a bump in pay as well. So just be prepared if you want some additional help inside your home that is not strictly nanny care, but maybe help with the laundry or meal prep, that may cost you several dollars per hour more. Outline the job duties is very necessary because it's gonna to help to avoid any confusion or hurt feelings down the road. Number six, make sure to list out if there are any allergies, special needs, or special considerations that need to be taken when providing care for the children. Number seven, it's also a good idea to list out what is not allowed during working hours. Some parents ask me if they need to include a drug and alcohol policy. I say absolutely. It doesn't hurt to include more information just in case. So some of the activities you may not want your nanny to do during working hours, of course, may include smoking, use of alcohol or drugs, cell phone use while driving. It could also include uh, prohibiting the use of curse words during working hours but from your nanny or inviting any guests over without pre-approval of the parents. Number eight, consider including any certifications that you'd like your nanny to maintain or any vaccinations you would like for them to be current on during the term of the contract. This could include things like being up to date with all recommended vaccinations. If there are any special vaccinations such as the COVID-19 vaccination, make sure you include that. This could also be something like maintaining their CPR first aid certification and keeping that current during the term of the employment. Number nine, make sure you have a sick policy. Figure out what everyone is comfortable with and write down your plan. In particular, you will want to have a COVID-19 plan. 
think about what might happen if the nanny or the family travels. Do we want a negative test result before we have re-entry back into the working relationship? Or what happens if somebody tests positive or suspects they may have COVID? Talk through those scenarios, work out a plan that everyone is comfortable with. This sick policy could also include a safety plan, such as health screenings, such as regular cleaning of high touch areas in the home, like doorknobs, that sort of thing. And it could also have provisions for regular hand washing or hand washing upon entry to the home each day. Number 10, compensation. Absolutely, you will want to outline the pay rate. You'll want to outline how pay will happen, including how hours are tracked and submitted to the parents, how reimbursements are handled, when and how payroll will happen, how taxes will be handled, and any compensation package information. For the compensation package items, this could include and outline things like paid time off, paid holidays, guaranteed hours, the medical stipend, or any overtime pay. Number 11, it's a good idea to outline a rest and meal break policy. So make sure that if you would like your nanny to take her rest break during the children's nap time, that you communicate that to her and kind of outline that in the contract. This could include the length of time of the rest break. This could include information that unless the nanny is able to be completely relieved of being on call for childcare duties during that time, they still get paid for that time. Things like that. So think about what a rest break or meal break policy might look like and outline that in your contract. Number 12, consider a confidentiality clause that covers use of photos, videos taken of family members, have a social media policy that includes any permissions or restrictions for social media posting. Number 13, include provisions for ending the working agreement. This should include how much notice the nanny and family are required to give one another if they would like to part ways, and what activities or actions are grounds for the nanny's dismissal. And finally, number 14, all parties should sign, date, and have copies of the working agreement or the nanny contract. And remember, if you need a comprehensive nanny contract and you live in Washington state, make sure to check out the links in the description below where you will find information about the Nanny Parent Connection nanny contract. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please click the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so that you can be alerted when more of these helpful videos come out next time. Please join in for episode 10 next time when we cover onboarding your nanny. Thanks everyone. I will see you next time. Bye.